Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Space Spotlight. Today, we're going to head up north to Scandia, Minnesota. One of my favorite drivers, Joe Valento. Joe, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing great, Rob. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm talking to you. It can't get much better than that. Uh, right? That's right. You know what? So, you know, preparing for this interview, I kind of took this trip down memory lane in trying to think about where did we meet at and how fast you progressed. You know, I think we met in, um, in Las Vegas. And at that point in time, you were racing a quarter midget. Yeah, yeah, that was our last year in quarter midgets. You know, and, and I can remember walking yeah. down pit road and, and, um, and I saw this very neat, well-mannered young man going around shaking everybody's hand and it was you. But that's really not how we met. How we really met was that you won one of the giveaways that Race Face was doing and that kind of leads us to where we are today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, uh, it definitely has progressed a lot over the years. Uh, are you sure it wasn't the bright orange cars that caught your attention? It could have been, it could have been the cars were bright. I would have to, I will have to admit that. But, but when you think about it, you know, again, we've gone kind of down this road together from quarter midgets and now you're racing with DGR with David Gilman. And in one of the top development teams, well, the Ford development team. I mean, there is no other Ford development team. And, and you were kind of like piloting that whole program because they didn't really run a lot of cars to races last year. And this year they, you know, Ford had encouraged them to, to get that program back up in gear. And here you are driving. Has it sunk in yet? What does it feel like? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's, it's a great opportunity for me. Uh, being up here in Minnesota, you, you know, you don't hear of a lot of NASCAR people or big name racers come from Minnesota, uh, a little bit from Wisconsin, but uh, it, it's it's important for me to race down south and being able to run with such a high profile team, such as David Gillen racing and being able to be tied with Ford as heavily as we are is a really great opportunity for me. And uh, really, it hasn't sunk in yet. You know, I don't think it will. Uh, until, you know, maybe the year's gone and make the next step onto whatever it may be. Um, but no, it, it, it's great. And it's uh, been a great year so far. I'm looking forward to the rest of the season. So, so tell the viewers what it was like to, or, or not, not just the first time that you walk in, but when you walk into that shop there in Mooresville and it's, it's got ARCA cars and NASCAR camping trucks are everywhere they're, they're actually working on cup cars in one of the other buildings for one of the one of their alliance teams. What is that feeling like for you to, to just kind of realize that, wow, I'm, I'm actually here? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's a lot going on in the shop, uh, like you explained. And, uh, you know, being able to talk and, and Anthony has high words for them. And, you know, he always talked about how great the environment was, how great the people were there. And uh, he's exactly right. You know, it's, it's the type of place where you, you walk in and um, they say hello. Every, I mean, every single one of the people working there says hello, no matter if they know you, if they don't know you, if whatever, if they're working on something, they'll stop, say hello, answer any questions you need, any, anything really. And it, it is a great environment. And uh, like you said, a lot of stuff going on there. So it's really cool being that I'm in late models right now, but I can still see, you know, I'm right next to the ARCA teams, the truck teams, and of course, uh, the cup stuff in the other shop is going on as well. So uh, it's really cool for me. It's almost like you can reach out and touch it and then just kind of say, just stay right there. I'm on my way. Well, yeah, that's exactly what it is. You know, you get a little bit of a taste of these, you know, these different cars and how they work and stuff. And um, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend, we're going to go down there and I'm going to be down in the shop Friday, hanging out with the guys and uh, just getting to know everyone. You know, I haven't spent a lot of time down in the shop. It's been kind of here and there, just back and forth trips. So right. excited to be down there for a day. So let's talk a little bit about the cars tour because, I mean, everybody's heard me say this time and time again. In my opinion, there is not a better development series anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. If you want to be a top level NASCAR racer, then you learn how to race in the cars tour. So 
you know, you've got two races under your belt, one at Dillon, one at Hickory Motor Speedway, that famed track. So is it as tough as you thought it would be? And is it living up to your expectations? Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, we're getting, I think we had 22 cars at Dillon and then 24 at Hickory. And the spread in qualifying is three tenths. You know, and, and people that know racing know that that's, I mean, that could be the difference between picking up the gas a millisecond faster. You know, it's, it's, it's crazy how competitive the series is. And uh, I mean, I'd say it's probably one of the most competitive, if not the most competitive late model series in the country. Yeah. Um, it's great competition every weekend. Yeah, and, hands down, I agree with you. And the good news is when you qualify here, we're not drawing pills and we're not rolling dice and we get a start. But, but this has been an adjustment for you um, because all the way up until this point in time, you've been involved in, in basically what we would call as kind of group qualifying. And now all of a sudden it's single car qualifying. How is that, how tough has that been to adjust to that? Yeah, for sure. And I've mentioned it before, that being one of the biggest things coming into the season that I was going to have to learn. Uh, obviously group qualifying, we got multiple cars on the track. They usually give us between four to six laps to get heat in our tires and run a good lap. Whereas, you know, like single car qualifying, it's, three laps in the cars tour, you have a dud lap and then your two timed laps. The biggest thing in the cars tour with from tires that we run and the type of cars that we run, the biggest thing is getting heat in your tires as fast as possible. And you do that just really by just almost overdriving the first two corners and just getting a whole bunch of wheel into it and just over, almost overheating those front tires just to get like the rubbery film off that you slip and slide for about the first lap. You know, the more and more people that I talk to, everyone just says it's a specific art that you just have to learn. You know, the first few times that you do it, you're not going to do good. Uh, it's, it's something you have to practice and learn and pick up, you know, as the season goes on. Hey, I don't, I don't care what series you're running in. You know, if you step up to the ARCA series next year, or you go truck racing and, you know, as you, as you venture up the ladder, Xfinity Cup, I think every single step of the way, the biggest thing that I've heard from every driver is learning how to qualify at that particular level because they're all different and also learning how to handle the restarts. And I think those are two of the, the biggest challenges that I see, like I said, for every driver, you know, no matter what level you're driving at, that you've got to get in there and you've got, you've got to learn how to do those couple of things. Yeah, for sure. And uh, that's what Greg, he's, he always tells me that is uh, qualifying is an art. And once you figure it out in the cars tour, you really have it figured out. You know, the, the, the next stuff to come isn't as hard. The cars tour stuff, for some reason, the qualifying is so difficult that when you master it and you have, you know, your certain technique, you have it down and you can run consistent, good qualifying every time. The stuff on after is, is not as difficult. It's easier to be able to pick up. So being, like we said earlier, it's, it's a great learning series and a good series for people my age uh, that are looking to make it happen. Is, it's a great series for us. So, you know, one of the other things, too, that we, we've always hear is that whether you race out west or you race in the Midwest, when you get to the east, it's a little bit rougher racing. It's a little bit more, they'll put the bumper to you, they'll they'll, you know, they'll door slam you a little bit. Have you found that to be true or you kind of cool where things are setting at right now? You know, right now it's, it's not bad. Uh, you know, it's the opening of the season. People I don't think are tending to be as rough. You know, it's not hot out. Tempers aren't flaring yet. Um, you know, you definitely see a little bit more pushing and shoving towards the end of the races. Obviously a lot different of an, of an environment. Uh, Pushing and shoving is a little bit more frowned upon up north. Don't know why. That's just the race, how the racing is. But obviously, yeah, like you said, down south, using the bumper isn't uncommon. You know, it's not uncommon to tear, you know, a front end up almost every race. You know, I've heard people say that people do that. So, I mean, as far as living up to the hype, I think as at the moment, it's fairly calm, cool, collected racing. People use the bumper as, you know, they would, you would expect the last 20, 30 laps or so, uh, trying to make up positions. But right now, I mean, it's, it's calm. I'm sure it's going to get more rough as the year goes on though. Yeah, I, I can, I can pretty much guarantee you that. So, you know, the other cool thing that you have the opportunity to do 
is, is to get some coaching from someone like David Gilliland that's been there, that's done it, that's raced at every level, that's won at every level that he's competed at. And, and what's that been like to have him as kind of like, let's just say your mentor for this year? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's been cool. I mean, obviously between uh, him and Greg, there's a ton, a ton of knowledge there. A ton of knowledge, uh, yeah. Greg, Greg, crew chiefing, uh, Matt, Matt DiBenedetto, excuse me, Ty Gibbs, and then, of course, David being a longtime racer that he is, tons of knowledge there, whether it be between crew chiefing or driving themselves. So being able to take both of those key things and putting them together and then being able to hand it off to me has been great. Uh, David came to our first ever test in a late mile stock at Hickory, helped coach me around the track, helped really help me pick up speed uh, a lot. Just learn how to drive the cars because coming from – the truck that we were in, it ran, the truck that we had was a truck body, but it ran a super late model chassis. Right. You, you drive it totally different. You know, your braking points, your throttle points, how you drive it. Uh, trail braking became a really big thing that's really stressed in the late model stock series. So just learning how to do that was really big and having him, you know, giving me the tips and stuff and different bits of information about the car has been really helpful. So we got just a couple minutes here before we need to wrap up. Your next race is at Orange County Speedway in Rougemont, North Carolina. Now, I can tell you, I've been there uh, a couple of times, went up there and, and tested with, uh, with Caden earlier in the year. That track is rough. Uh, it's old and it is fast. How much are you looking to forward to going up there? Uh, yeah, for sure. It's going to be exciting. And I've heard the exact same thing that, I mean, that's the track that you'll kind of go Ooh, when you come out of the course a little bit where, but, but I mean, it's going to be exciting for sure. And obviously that's a really big race here coming up in a few weeks. Uh, we're going to go down and run a local race just to get our feet wet, learn a little bit more, but obviously really excited about that one. And, you know, we talked about which one was going to be most exciting for me looking forward to this year. And I have to say it would probably be that one. I've heard a lot of good things about that track. A lot of people uh, enjoy the track and have had a lot of good success, people around me. So I have to say that's the one I'm most excited for. Yeah, I know I went on the Cars Tour website and, and they would ask all the drivers, especially the Tour in 12, they'd ask them, what is your favorite track? And it was hands down. I mean, literally hands down, it was going to Orange County Speedway. Well, Joe, we appreciate you spending some time with us. If you guys are not following Joe Valento, I encourage you to go to Joe Valento Racing. Make sure to stop by his fan zone. Register for his digital newsletter. Follow him on Facebook and just get connected with this young man. He is one of the up-and-coming stars in the sport. And you know what, Joe? We're, it's going to be a great year. I think this is going to be probably one of the years that you, you learn the most about racing so real quick in just 30 seconds do you want to give a shout out to some of your sponsors yeah so i'd like to thank thank uh ford performance david gillen racing of course race face brand development nitro lubricants napa auto parts and the friends of jackman foundation well there you got it joe valeno scandia minnesota everyone thanks for tuning in make sure again to follow joe valento check him out are we keeping updated at race Face brand development as far as our website is concerned and make sure to tune back in in two weeks for our next race Face spotlight joe good evening everybody have a great night